Hello, and welcome back to Smarmalay Plays Autumn's Journey! Orly and Omari are getting a little touchy-feely with each other. Touching each other's ears. And you know what that means. Next up, touching... Other things. <laughs> Alright, let's go. Fascinating! And sun children and moon children get along? Everyone seems to mingle together. Yes, the only difference is what we worship. What about dragon kind? Is it the same for you? Not exactly. Why are they just standing there touching each other's ears? They need to stop. And like smiling at each other goofily. Not exactly. Dragon and Uranus... Urius? Are respectfully aware of each other, but avoid association. Although there are some exceptions. Ignis live in the volcanic regions and isolate themselves, while Seraphi rarely leave the Skylands. We pretty much keep to our own kind for the most part. <laughs> I see! Look at his little snaggle tooth. That's actually adorable. <laughs> there was a moment of silence before I spoke up. Get your fucking hand off my ear. Um, we should probably let go before people wonder why we're standing like this. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, he already said it. We hastily let go, our amused smiles reassuring each other that we were at ease. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I should get to bed now. We have a busy day ahead of us. Try not to think of me naked and lying in bed. Thank you. Night, Orly. Thanks so much for everything. It's fine. I had fun too, even if I got dragged halfway across Barry to do odd chores. Once I opened the door to my house, I spotted my mom sitting at the table, holding a quill over some blank parchment. She was writing me a script for condoms. I covered my mouth to muffle a squeal. <laughs> You're doing it? You're writing the letter? I bounced on my heels and launched into a tackle as I hugged my mom from behind. I peered over her shoulders. I'm going to be a real knight! You're actually gonna do it! You're actually gonna do it! I'm gonna be a knight! I halted and let go, suddenly confused. Wait, what made you change your mind? My mom laughed ha, 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 and leaned back, flashing me her tits and a meaningful smile. Well, I did some thinking, and I thought maybe you were right. You are ready. That's what I've been telling you, bitch. My smile was so wide it hurt. Thanks. Thanks, Mom. Love you, and good night. I look forward to reading it in the morning. I dashed upstairs, determined to fall asleep. However, I couldn't help but toss and turn as I replayed the day's events. Two hot dragons and a mom. And not only Omari's questions. What? Okay, but that but that I was going to become a knight once I revive in Olivier. Oliver. Wow! Can I start that over? <sighs> And not only Ilmari's questions, but that I was going to become a knight once I arrived in Oliver. The task to protect the carriage could be viewed as my first duty as a knight. My first real mission. I certainly couldn't sleep now. Hey, Tilda! I hugged my pillow and rolled around, unable to stop my giddiness. I'm going to be a real knight! I know, you just said that. I'm going to be a professional knight, motherfucker! Do professional knights normally act like this? I don't care, I'm so happy, Tilda. To achieve the title of knight, one usually had to be trained in a famous school or academy and graduate from there. Since I did not live in a big city that has such establishments, I trained solely under my mom instead, and her status and achievements were well known. Which was why I needed that letter BADLY. If she recommended me, other captains or noblemen would probably hire me and I would serve the Sun and Moon Council. And I'd be able to see more of Ishtera outside of Barry as a real knight. Unable to remain still, I hopped out of bed and paced restlessly. I approached the window, not sure what I was expecting. How are those two anyway? It's not like Kerr can transform back and sleep how he always does. I wonder if I can find them and check on them quickly. Snatching the blanket off of the bed, I wrapped it around my shoulders like an oversized shawl. Then I strapped on my belt and scabbard and walked out the door. Outside it was comfortably cool and I found the sound of crickets and frogs soothing as I walked beside the river. I guess I was subconsciously anticipating to find Elmari sleeping on the bank or underwater. On a whim, I entered the apple orchard. I spotted Elmari sitting against one of the tree trunks, 
His ears instantly perked up, although I had the feeling he'd heard me approaching earlier. Can't sleep? Something like that! I was just jerking off! I sat down next to him. He poked at the grass in front of him dejectedly. Care wouldn't bond with me! <laughs> I just wanted to become his blood brother and he won't! Uh, bond? Dragons bond by nestling together! I thought since we were going to be travel companions, despite our differences... He hated the idea, though. Care doesn't seem to like being touched in general, I can imagine. He stared at me hopefully. Um, will you bond with me, please? Sleep next to me, I love you. He stopped and tucked his knees up, his arms resting around his legs. What about you? Uh, I mean, is it different between heaven kind? I scrambled to formulate an answer. Well, cuddling is something between family and loved ones. Hugs are more acceptable between friends. What did I know? My mind was full of knighthood dreams and sword skills. In no way was I the most authoritative representative... Representative? Yes, regarding heavenkind relationships. Hug? <laughs> Why I said it like that? You put your arms around someone and hold them close. I mimed the action using my blanket. He nodded in understanding and bounced up and down for some reason. Ah, then I guess you wouldn't... Um... <sighs> Fine. Let's hug. Declining Omari would be like rejecting a basket full of kittens. Kittens that all looked up at you pleadingly. For a few minutes. I can't stay out here all night. I do need to return to my bed. We put a blanket around each other. We hugged. And it was so cute. I shuffled over to him until we were shoulder to shoulder and adjusted the blanket so it draped over both of us. Why in heaven's name was she wearing this full outfit to sleep in? The world may never know. It's not that cold out. Not really, it feels nice! I'm touching your boob! So, forgot to ask this earlier, but why are you interested in learning about heavenkind? Because your culture is fascinating! Uh... That is so amazing! Everything the heavenkind do is amazing! You can create things I've never seen before! And look, you can do this! He wiggled his thumbs and fingers. They're so dexterous! <laughs> I laughed and mimicked him momentarily. It's true our kinds are interacting more. I assume you've heard of it. Of course. Yes, I'd like to be a sort of mediator. I think you call it a diplomat? I've already tried to help Kevinkind before. I think I just said Kevinkind. But it didn't work out. It's harder than it looks. How so? Um, well, well, this one incident, they were willingly entering this monster's mouth, and there was nothing I could do about it. What? No. Wait, a monster? Yes, this strange one that smells of wood and floats on the water. I've never seen it before, and the Kevin kind simply enter it. I nudged it a few times, but people seemed upset. Ilmari! Those are boats. We use them to travel up and down the river. What? So it wasn't a monster? He slumped into the blanket, mortified. I patted him on the shoulder, trying to reassure him. It's okay. Misunderstandings happen. You had good intentions. And now you'll be able to study heavenkind at a more personal level. I'll do my best to clarify anything you're uncertain of. In return, tell me more about dragonkind. That seems fair. I'll try not to ask any more boring questions, though. I mean, what interested me didn't seem so fun for you. <sighs> I'm never turning butter again. Feeling that our conversation, feeling that our conversation had reached a satisfying note, I clutched the blanket and stood up. You'll be fine by yourself. Of course. Yes, I'll see you in the morning. Playfully, I draped the blanket back over him. Even a dragon might need an extra layer of warmth in a heavenkind body. Take care, then! As I sauntered back to my house, easily guided by the bright moon, I spotted Kara restlessly pacing by the door. Puzzled, I approached him. Need something? Elmari has passed the river if you're looking for him, and just tug on his dick. I don't care. Nothing to do with him, but thanks for the heads up, since I can avoid him easier. 
I would have given him a light punch on the shoulder, but I remembered he hated contact. I hate that movie too, it's pretty shit. Agreed. <sighs> mean. Play nice, he'll be traveling with you after all. I hope you don't mind being stuck with me until we reach Oliver. I think we'll have fun, I'm looking forward to it. Annoying. I've noticed! I heard you squealing even from afar! My ears couldn't shut it out if I tried. I only like squealing when I'm causing it. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's something I've always wanted to do, and now it's the perfect opportunity. All the experience from my freelance jobs will finally pay off, and I'll be on the road to knighthood. Let's make tomorrow's task a successful one. Da -da -da. We're guarding that wagon so the merchant's cargo will arrive safely in Oliver. Think you can handle it? He wrinkled his nose. Arr! An escort mission. I played Resident Evil 4. Not the most glamorous duty, but it's honorable. Anyway, I'm going to bed. I promise I'll stop squealing. As I was about to open the door, Care stepped forward. Look, um... Wait, um... He scratched the back of his neck sheepishly. Surprised by his rather modest display, I looked at him intently. Yes? About earlier. Uh... When you cram that food into my mouth. Sorry about that. Oh, um, I was joking, so don't worry about it. I'm sorry if it seemed mean-spirited. It wasn't my intention. No, you were right! Uh... Care uh... seemed both shocked and offended by my reaction. Thanks. What I mean to say is, you did help me. A little. 